So I want to say thank you to come, for all of you for coming. Um, what I think is uh, 30 years in the making and certainly the last six and a half years that I've been a part of this story. It's been uh, a long road, to say the least, to get to this place. But uh, we are very, very excited about the next six weeks and uh, the long-term future of uh, this beautiful theater. Um, you know, today we are formally announcing a partnership with the Friends of the Lowe's and after years of litigation and a long road to get here, we are issuing an RFP jointly to find a operator of this theater. And uh, part of that will be to complete the original mission of the Friends of the Lowe's, which is to restore this theater, to protect this theater, and make it as magnificent as it was when it opened in the 1920s. Um, a little bit about this theater is that it uh, opened in 1929 and uh, at a cost of $2 million back then, which was an astronomical amount of money. And there's only a handful of theaters like this across the country, um, and even less that still exist in any sort of uh, resemblance of what's here today. Uh, this was, their sister theater was renovated in Brooklyn several years ago under the Bloomberg administration, and uh, it's been brought back to its original glory, and we look forward to the same fate here at the uh, historic landmark Lowe's Theater. So before I speak about kind of the road forward, um, I wanted to bring up Colin, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't publicly say thank you to Colin and Patty for their advocacy over the last several decades. Uh, this would not be here today if it wasn't for the Friends of the Lowe's and their leadership. There were many times where there were proposals to knock down this theater and build residential development. And it was the community that came together that decided to protect it. And through uh, sweat and hard work, uh, they've gotten to the place where it is today. But it's not lost on anybody that there's a lot more work to do to get it to a place where we can truly showcase uh, uh, world-class acts on a regular basis throughout the whole year uh, and fill this with 3,000 people. So um, we're excited about the future. We're thankful for the work that uh, Friends of the Lowe's have done. And I'm going to turn it over uh, to Colin to say a couple words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, you, you set it up for me very well by talking about the community and what was accomplished here. It was um, in the August, August of 1986 that this place showed supposedly the last picture show, uh, a movie called, I think it was one, Cra one Crazy Summer, which might have been apropos considering that with that, this place was supposedly going to be torn down. Now, a uh, few people in the city didn't like that idea, including then uh, freshman councilman Bill O'Day, who I don't think is with us today. He's a freeholder today, and he's on the board of Friends of the Lowe's. And he had tried to get some movement going to save this place, but it wasn't in ca having a lot of success. And by the following April, February and March, um, the Jersey Journal, New York Times, everybody was saying this place was doomed. Um, a few of us living in the city didn't like that idea. We thought it was foolish to tear this building down. And frankly, at that time, tearing it down was the city policy for improving General Square, and we disagreed. So we went to a, a planning board meeting and um, met a few other folks who felt like we did, and the organization called Friends of the Lowe's came together. Now, it's been a very long road from um, there to here. If all we had accomplished was saving this landmark, I, I think that would have been certainly enough, but really we did more. Um, we reclaimed part of Jersey City, Jersey City's legacy, and we also proved some things about our city. We reclaimed, I've begun to reclaim, Journal Square as a place people want to come and spend some time and have a good time. If you know anything about Jersey City, you know that's what Journal Square was for decades. And with this theater, it, will, it is working its way back, plus a lot of other development, including I have to give a plug to the Journal Square lounge next door. Uh, they provided the, uh, the food and refreshments we have. And that's another sign of what happens when you have a theater, you have a restaurant, you have people coming together. So we've we're, we're working to reclaim Journal Square along with all the development in the square. But we also proved to ourselves that Jersey City is the kind of place where when we began, everyone said, oh, no one will care, but a lot of people did. And no one will come out, Everybody, a lot of people came out. 
The city government will never listen. The city government listened and changed its policy. And then when there was not enough funding to um, really get this place open in any way at all, it had been closed and ready for demolition, we hit upon the idea of asking the community to roll up their sleeves and volunteer, and not just to sweep, but to do some pretty heavy construction. And lots of people said I was crazy, and I probably thought I was crazy too. But we did it. They, they did it. And we continue to do that. They continue to work on the building and continue to present programming. And that's one other thing we've done. We've given Jersey City and proved that Jersey City wants, needs, and enjoys a variety of programming, arts programming, entertainment programming, ethnic programming, affordable programming. And all of that, as the mayor said, brought together a community. And this building is, is and what was, is and will be many things. Part of its story is that community and the continuing role of that community in programming and supporting it and taking care of it. The next, the other part of the story is now bringing in a major promoter and having the kinds of large shows and the kind of restoration that will make this at once our Beacon Theater, our Carnegie Hall, and our little community theater, all one. And that's really a wonderful thing, I think. And it also is going to prove that you can do that, that you can bring together nonprofit arts interests with commercial arts, commercial business, commercial show business interests. Um, we've worked a long time with the mayor, uh, the business administrator, and other people in the city to put together a plan that we are confident will do just that, allow us to have everything we need here. Um, I would be remiss if I also don't point out another long-term supporter of the theater and historian of Jersey City, Councilman Rich Bogiano here. Um, a few of my friends of Lowe's volunteers are in the audience. I just want to thank them. And I want to thank Mayor Fulham. Um, he alluded to uh, some disagreements we've had in the past. I think it is a measure of the dedication of people to an idea and to a goal that they can disagree strongly and have had difficulty in their relationship, but work through it and find a way to work together to accomplish their goal. And that's what we've done. So I thank Mayor Fulop, and I also want to recognize uh, Bill O'Day, the person I told you about who was here when they closed this theater, theater um, and trying to get interested in saving it back in 1986. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you at some shows here. Thank you. I want to invite up uh, the councilman for Ward C, Rich Bogiano, who uh, also serves as uh, our unofficial historian for uh, Jersey City. I just want to say thank you to the mayor, to Brian, Patty, and Colin, because it's been a long fight. I started coming into this theater in 1970. Everybody that went on a date came to the Low East Theater. And I got to tell you, right now, probably standing out here, if you believe in spirits, Frank Sinatra is standing right out here with the Three Stooges, because Frank Sinatra loved this building. And uh, he's probably so proud that it's being preserved. Colin, Mayor, and the rest of you, you did a great job. Let's get it fixed up. Let's have professional theater here also. And let's uh, make this the palace that it once was back in the 1960s, 50s, and 40s. So thank you. Bill, you want to take it? Um, and freeholder Bill O'Day, who's also a board member of the Friends of the Lowe's, who helped uh, us contract and negotiate with the uh, community group here. Thank you, Mayor. To, to um, echo a little bit of what Richie said, I grew up about seven or eight blocks from here. So as a kid, I often went to movies here. They used to have great uh, movies and Christmas parties for kids that the local political leaders would, uh, would host, which is one of the things that kind of got me interested in politics as a kid. I remember being here um, for the last film showed when it was a multiplex with the late great political columnist for the Jersey Journal, Peter Weiss. Uh, it was one of the Friday the 13th. There were so many of them and they were all so terrible, I don't really remember which one it was. Um, but then in 1987, uh, as a councilman and a member of the planning board, I remember the battle we had um, to save this theater. Uh, we had to override the mayor, 
course, not my good friend, Mayor Fuller, who I believe back then was maybe in the third or fourth grade, <laughs> which is frightening to think about from my perspective. Um, but we literally had to override the mayor's veto when we adopted a redevelopment plan that would not allow a developer to take this building down. And here we are 33 years later. Um, the FOL, of which I've had the honor of sitting on that board for many years, uh, has struggled to keep the doors open and has been successful in doing so uh, when many other similar-like theaters um, have not, have not continued to survive. And I think today is a very, very exciting day because now, more than three decades later, um, with the s strong support of the councilman for the area, with the leadership of, of Mayor Fulop and, and Brian Platt, um, they're ready to go out and bring in a, a partner um, to run and operate and undertake a large investment, a large capital investment into this theater to make it a performing arts center that, trust me, will more than rival the PNC Arts Center in Newark. Because what this building has is beauty and history that you will never be able to replicate. So I'm excited because I think that this will continue to be um, an impetus to the growth and development of this Journal Square area, but really to an ongoing rebirth of performances here, for artists here. The excitement of what's going to be able to go on here, uh, I think, is something that's amazing. And uh, I've been around 33 years dealing with I know I'm going to be around long enough to see that come to fruition. And again, the mayor um, and the council and everyone has been amazing in getting it done. So thank you very much. Okay, before I bring up Brian Platt, who's the business administrator, to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the RFP, I, I wanted to just uh, walk through why we've been so adamant about getting the RFP out and going through litigation. Um, going through some political tough times here, what I thought was for the better good of Journal Square and Jersey City overall. Um, when I first came into office, I thought that this uh, was a tremendous asset, as you can see, that was underutilized. I thought the Friends of the Lowe's did a phenomenal job in keeping the doors open when theaters were closing, and um, they served a purpose with regards to outreach to the community and making sure that the community still knew that existed. And with very, very little funding, they were able to create a, a regular programming here. But if you looked at this building and you walked in here for five minutes, you would see that there was much, much more that was possible in this, uh, in this facility. And so we started to think about what it would cost and how we would go about getting world-class acts in Jersey City on a regular basis here in Journal Square. And um, the reason I felt that that was important is because Jersey City didn't have a center for the arts like this, number one. And number two was that Journal Square is a priority for us to restore it back to being the heart of the city, to being the place that everybody comes to, whether it's for restaurants, whether it's for nightlife, whether it's for a show. And this was crucial to all of that. We changed all of our incentive programs to get development happening in this part of the city. And you see um, that most of the development right now has migrated away from downtown, actually, to the biggest projects are actually here in the heart of Journal Square. You don't need to walk very far to see cranes going up. Next projects will be starting, will be directly adjacent to this on either side. Um, there's a project behind this. We're in litigation with the Kushners across the street. You have the other uh, Kushner project, which we have another tower that's scheduled to be built over there. And then, you, of course, you have the Port Authority that's uh, put out an RFP to transform their entire facility. So when you think about what's possible here, um, you're going to have density, but you didn't really have culture and arts. So the city made an investment in purchasing a building across the street called the Pathside Building, which will be a future home to the Jersey City Museum. And we're going through the process with cultural affairs on that front, and that is moving forward. And then across the street where we're standing today stands this magnificent theater, which has endless potential. Now, if you look at the entertainment world today, you certainly know that there are a few big players that control the entire market. And that's an unfortunate circumstance for most people, but it's a reality of the world today. And if we wanted to play in that market, we had to bring in a major operator. That was just the reality of how this would work. And at the same time, looking at the council's financing and the city's finances, 
We didn't have the money by ourselves to renovate this with $40 million of our own dollars in order to get it to where we want it to be. To have year-round programming, you need to restore the air conditioning here, you need to redo the heat here, you need to make it ADA compliant, you need to do some work on the backside for big shows that they can bring in the trucks and load and unload. So there's a lot of work that needed to be done and that's a big capital investment. So what we're doing today is we're going out for a very, very short window RFP of six weeks. And in six weeks, we're very, very comfortable that we're gonna get responses from some major operators um, that have a presence worldwide. And then we're gonna make a deal with whoever is the best one that's willing to work with the city and the Friends of the Lowe's. Through this process over the last six years, uh, we've become very close with the Friends of the Lowe's and they are incorporated in that RFP to make sure that the community component that has made this special for the last 20, 30 years is protected. So there are days set aside, there is a role for the Friends of the Lowe's, we're gonna make sure that there is community program that is affordable, but at the same time, we wanna restore this to be one of the best theaters in the entire country. And as I think Colin and Billy said earlier, if you look around this place, there are no theaters that have this sort of presence. It just doesn't exist. It really takes you back into an era that is long, long, long forgotten. So um, we're excited about this today. We're very, very thankful for the partnership with the Friends of the Lowe's, and uh, we're excited to finally be turning the page um, and starting the next chapter of uh, the historic landmark Lowe's Theater. And I'm gonna turn it over to Brian Platt, uh, who's gonna walk through the mechanics, who's been instrumental in negotiating this and uh, getting us to this point today. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I just want to say that it's been a pleasure of mine to partner with the Friends of the Lowe's and build relationships with the group over so many years, uh, trying to make sure that our collective visions are achieved here. Um, so what you'll see from the RFP that is being released today is uh, a request for proposals for a single entity to both restore the facility to full uh, operating capacity and uh, also preserve the historic elements of the building, uh, but also for the management of the facility, the, the commercial management of the facility, meaning uh, we, are, we are very much looking for uh, an entity to come in to bring national and international performances and touring acts uh, to provide a source of entertainment and a destination here for Jersey City, while also setting aside uh, and promoting and preserving the community component of programming that the Friends of the Lowe's has put on uh, over many, many years. And, and it's important to note that even though the building, the facility is not quite at full capacity, the Friends of the Lowe's have done a lot to make sure that whatever capacity is here uh, is utilized to the fullest. And we've had a lot of great programming from them. We want to make sure that continues. We want to give the ability for not just Friends of the Lowe's to expand that uh, programming, but for other community groups uh, in and around Jersey City to make sure that they have a destination and a facility to do so. Uh, the funding component is going to be sort of complicated in the sense that it won't be a single funding source. Uh, we're asking respondents to uh, provide some contribution to the project itself uh, through a lease payment or other payments that they may propose in the proposal. Uh, we are hoping, our, our vision is not to have to spend many taxpayer dollars, if any, on this project, even though we think it's a tens of millions of dollars of, of a project here. Um, there are lots of alternate funding sources that we will be seeking to uh, access for this, such as historic tax credits, new market tax credits, uh, you name it, the list goes on. Um, uh, that's pretty much the summary of the document. Uh, it will be posted shortly on the JCRA website, jcra.org. 